Hi buddy, welcome back. I'm the Strategy Professor, and today we're going to be looking at a Zyra replay. I believe this is Bronze 3 from Sean, so thank you very much, Sean. I greatly appreciate it. So first off, we're going to go over just some uh, common runes for Zyra, then good build orders, and then um, itemization, skill maxing, and then we'll watch the game itself, and I will take some notes as we watch it, and then at the very end, we'll wrap it up with kind of the best 5 to 10 things to help Sean uh, gain some more ELO. If you're interested in a coaching session yourself, it's just $20. Just email me at thestrategyprofessor at gmail.com. I'll make a video just like this for you to try to help you improve your game. If you want to st skip straight to the game start time, I'll have it timestamped in the description. If you want to see this Google Doc, um, then you can uh, find that in the description as well. Uh, and yeah, if you want to watch more coaching videos, I have a playlist linked in the description and in this Google Doc. I have champion guides, including an in-depth Zyra guide, if you want to check that out as well on the channel and if you want to donate to help support the channel in various ways like i said you can get a coaching session uh sometimes i sing karaoke for ten dollars on stream i'll play the favorite champion of your choice support or any other role for ten dollars during a stream or if you can't quite afford or just don't want to spend twenty dollars on a coaching session just catch me on a stream and for five dollars i'll just look over your op.gg for five or ten minutes and we'll just talk about your itemization your runes champions you're playing compositions um, and just as much information as I can get off your OP.GG. Okay, let's go ahead and get in here. All right, so uh, make sure that your warding is strong. I didn't look at your warding numbers before this, but in general, you want to go for one ward, on, one control ward per five minutes on average. So a 30-minute game, you should have at least six control wards. And then ideally, you want about one ward on average, one normal ward. So in about a 30-minute game, you should have 30 normal wards placed. So that's just a really good metric to aim for. So just you can monitor that yourself if you look at your own OP.GG. Just kind of figure that out and just see if you can start getting to those numbers. And, it, it you know, it's going to depend on how the game's going. You know, if there's a game where you're completely steamrolling people, then maybe you don't need as many control wards there. Or if you're really far behind, it might be more difficult to go out and place um, wards safely. Although I will say you should be able to place wards somewhere on the map, you know, most of the time. So those are really good numbers to shoot for. As far as runes go, um, you almost always want to go Comet and then either Mana Flow, Ulti Hat, Celerity, and Scorch. This just gives you the best combination of early game harassment with late game scaling. Comet oops, uh, is particularly good on Zyra because each attack of your plants is going to lower the cooldown on Comet. It does area of effect damage later on if people are clumped up. Um, and it scales a lot better with AP than Aerie does. Aerie is better in the early game because it gives you that guaranteed damage uh, whenever you hit people with your plants, but Comet's going to scale a lot better into the late game. Now, I used to always go Mana Flow on Zyra, but for 8.9, she did get uh, an extra 5 mana per 5 early, so now she has 15 mana per 5, which doesn't make a ton of sense, but that's just how it is. So you don't really run out of mana in lane anymore. So I think it's nice to get ulti hat. You do have a really high impact ult, which is very, very important. Um, I mean, that ult can come down to winning or losing some team fights later. And you really, like, you're a burst champion at the core um, in the mid to late game most of the time. So you really don't need mana flow because you shouldn't be running out of mana in these situations. So mana flow is nice. If you really just like to spam Qs on people, then that's fine. But how her trading pat pattern usually works in lane is you're waiting on your w plants anyways because your q by itself really doesn't do that much dam uh damage and it is kind of expensive even with mana flow ban even with 15 mana per five if you just sit there and spam q every time it's off cooldown you just you're not going to accomplish a ton typically and uh you're just going to make yourself out of mana so if you just wait on the plants which are your true damage you know or your um most of your damage i should say not like the technical term true damage but they are most of your damage um you know the plant cooldown is going to be 20 seconds in lane anyways and so typically i think just going for the standard trading pattern of waiting on your plants and then using ulti hat is really nice for the mid to the late game there are some arguments i guess for going transcendence or absolute focus the extra cdr is nice but you're a very dangerous champion you know she only has i believe three a very low amount of base movement speed she doesn't have any um movement modifiers in her kit she's extremely dangerous so she's very powerful in lane but a lot of uh, junglers know you can gank and kill her pretty easily so celerity gives you that extra little bit of movement speed to help you out um, in those situations so celerity is what you want most of the time if you want to do a little bit more poke damage absolute focus can be good especially later in the game it does give you a bit more damage 
Uh, and then Transcendence does give you that extra 10% CDR, which is nice, but it doesn't kick in until later in the game, and you're already going to be strong at that point. So I've tried all of the things, and Celerity just feels a lot better because you just really, really want that movement speed. And then Scorch is pretty much what you always take because you can trigger it so easily in lane off of your plants. Uh, Gathering Storm is nice for later in the game, but you're really playing Zyra to dominate the early game, to dominate lane, um, and just hope to close it out before too much later into the game. Now, the secondary runes are a lot more interesting. I see you went Domination when I was loading up the game. I don't know which runes they are in there yet. Um, the Domination combinations you can use. I have recommended uh, Taste of Blood and Genius Hunter in some lanes. If you think your team already has enough damage and you want to try to go for, like... Um, a Shirelia's plus Twin Shadows build. That is an interesting build that does give you a lot more utility later on in the game, helps keep you a bit safer. And you still do pretty good damage. Um, another nice feature of that is the build, like the build order is much nicer compared to going for Leandri's. Leandri's is a lot better once you fully complete it, you do way more damage. But that little time in between when you can complete haunting guys where you have to save up for a blasting wand and then save up even more to complete Leandre's. Um, that feels really bad because a lot of times you're having to sit there, you know, on like 600 gold when you go back. And that just leads to very inefficient buys. So being able to just build a bunch of amp tomes and, you know, ruby crystals and all that stuff is really nice. So I kind of like that build, especially if you're in a lane where you're not really going to be threatened or killed that much. You're against the Sona Ezreal, and the Sona took... Um, I believe Grasp the Undying as her main rune. So, you know, this would be a situation where you could go in Genius Hunter and then Taste of Blood gives you some sustain uh, in the lane, which is nice. Other options, I mean, you could do something like um, Taste of Blood Eyeball Collection or, I don't know, really, there aren't a lot of great combos right now in Domination. I think if you're going to go Domination, then going for the Taste of Blood and Genius Hunter would probably be the way to go. Um, the other option that's very common to see on Zyra's, and this was kind of the old school build, like maybe a couple of patches ago, is Magical Footwear plus uh, Cosmic Insight, typically. So Footwear is just a good bargain. You get like a 380 gold value. You get the movements, you get the boots themselves, which are 300 gold, and then you get that extra 10 movement speed, which depending on how you value that is usually between like 350 and 400 uh, movement speeds. So that's really nice. And then you get the extra 5% cooldown reduction and 5% uh, summoner spell reduction. So you get a few more, you know, ignites throughout the game. And um, so th this is a really good bargain. It also gives you a lot of extra AP because you're going sorcery and then you're combining that with inspiration. So that's a pretty good option. I think you get like maybe five more AP than you would if you go domination. Maybe it's not that much, but it's an incremental amount more than if you go sorcery domination, I believe. But the most common build right now, as of 8.9, in most situations, is going to be Bone Plating Chrysalis. This is just really good all-in protection, um, especially against Assassins. In the mid to the late game, it does help out a little bit, especially Bone Plating. And if you're against an all-in lane like a Leona or an Alistar or something like that, then you definitely want to take this. It gives you some more HP. It gives you just that extra survivability. And the extra 60... Um, or 15 ability power that you get off of this, rather, is a really good bargain later on in the game. So even if you don't think you're going to need the health early, that extra ability power is like 400... I think it's like 466 gold value or something. So it's really, really nice. It's a much higher gold value. If you compare Chrysalis to something like Magical Footwear, remember Magical is going to give you like 370 gold value. This is going to give you like 466, I think. Let me pull that up and I can give you an exact number here. because each point of AP is worth 21.75 gold value. Oh, 326. Okay, so my math's way off. So it is uh, a little bit less. I don't know where I got that number from. Uh, it is a little bit less than... Uh, let me do that again. Is that... Yeah, I guess I've just... I haven't had math. Look, I haven't had math in like a million years. Yeah, that makes sense. Because 15 times 15 is 225. So, you know, 15 times 21. I don't know what I was thinking. Um, so... Pretty good value, so it turns out not as good as uh, the Magical Footwear, um, but it does translate into power, you know, damage that you actually do, whereas Footwear just kind of gives you that extra gold 
which I guess you can buy into power later. So it's similar. It's on the same sort of power level as magical footwear, but it actually does something early in the game. This doesn't do anything. This gives you 60 AP or 60 uh, bonus health, which is nice. So that's worth like you know 150 bonus health worth 2.66 each. So. Yeah, 160. So this is like 160 to start with, ends up being whatever that number was, 327. Whereas this is nothing, and then 10 minutes in, gets you like 370. So these are kind of comparable. And then Cosmic is all right, um, but Bone Plating will save your life. So right now, on 8.9, this is what I would recommend. They are nerfing both of these because almost everybody gets them. So I think they're proposing to take off 10 health from Chrysalis which is okay, and they're lowering the bone plating health down, I think, to 15 to something else, which is a pretty big hit. So we'll see how that impacts the meta. We might shift back and go for more of this inspiration build again, um, or you might see people going for the Ingenious Hunter Taste of Blood build. We'll see. A lot of people don't do this one. This is just kind of a strategy professor special that I've talked about and tried, and it's it's interesting. Um, so anyways, there, there are definitely a few different options, but... Um, you know, right now, I think this is what you should do on this patch, and then next patch, we might be transitioning over to this, if you want to go for the Shirelias, you know, kind of build, or, um, or this, if you want to go for probably the most standard build, being Magical Footwear Cosmic Insight. Okay, uh, build order, you know, typically you want to go Watcher, Sorcerer, Shuliandri, Rylai, if you think you have enough damage, then you could go Watcher, Sorcery, um, Twin Shadows, Shirelias. That build does give you a lot of CDR too, so you have you have the Ghost, you have the Shirelias, um, they'll be you know really powerful actives, and then you also have um, you'll end up with like 40 percent CDR off of that because Watcher gives you 10, 30 percent. Watcher gives you 10, and then Shirelia and Twin Shadows gives you 10, and you get a lot of movement speed off of those, so it helps you reposition and rotate faster. So it is definitely less damage, but it gives you a lot of stuff, which is nice. Um, that would be like more ultimates, more plants, all of that good stuff. And you always want to max your EWQ. There are some people that have been talking about like getting three points of Q in lane. I'm not a huge fan of that uh, because you're waiting on your plants, like I mentioned before. Uh, okay, let's go ahead and get in here. We spent a lot. We spent enough time on the on the pregame. So yeah, those are just the different options and things you should be thinking about. All right, let's get rolling. Because usually I like for these to be about an hour. Usually I have about a ten minute preamble. I just kind of talk about different options you could go. Okay. Now, Sean did tell me, I don't remember the exact like minute or whatever this happens, but there's something weird with like his ultimate where it doesn't trigger because in one, one key fight, because he forgot to um, rebind it to be a uh, smart cast or whatever they call it instant cast i don't remember but um the old school smart cast where you just press it without having to press it twice because he was playing some champion where smart cast was bad before that there are some out there like i don't smart cast rumbles old and things like that so anyways his key bindings were a little off so he said it was going to look weird and that's what happened i keep flashes in and does nothing and dies <laughs> so that's that's the explanation when we get to that point. Minor spoiler alert. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Ideally, you want to try to get a plant around to help your jungle out. Early on, so you want to cast your Q on one of those plants. They can always just... if you. If the plant spawns right on top of the camp, they can always use the camp to tank, like, a couple of hits from the camps. So not only does it do damage, but your plants can also take hits to help your jungler stay healthy. Yeah, get those autos now. Okay, so she does have bone plating. You don't really have to play around it too much, I don't think. I mean, if you're really trying to play it super top end, you can try to auto her first. Trigger that bone plating and then go for an all-in kill after that. I would say it's probably a good idea to trigger it with at least a range plant and don't try to eat all in her until you see that she that bone plating is down. It's got a 45 second cooldown, so. Okay, that's not great. 
Oh, Darius doesn't have flash either. Well, y'all can probably be a little careful when you push up like this, but y'all can probably count on them camping this uh, Darius because he doesn't have flash. He does have ghost, I suppose, but. That's sketch. Who's there? Yeah, it's Hecarim. Hecarim's probably going to camp top. So yeah, so you, you don't want them to do that. <laughs> so you want to push up and see if you can draw the jungle down here. Just don't get caught to just get them off of Darius. Because, like, the best thing their team can be doing right now is camping this Darius. Because he doesn't have flash. Now, Kha'Zix kind of did you a favor and walked up here and warded this. And we didn't, at least I didn't see the jungler on the minimap when he did that. So that means he might be on the bot side. So be a little careful. Yeah, go in there. You got full health. Get in there. Attack him. Attack him. Okay, good. Yeah, turn on this guy. He's in your minions. He's in your minions. He can't fight you right now. Just start attacking him. See how much damage those minions are doing to him? Chase him to, like, right here. See if you can get one more Q on him. But don't, ch don't chase him further than that. Okay, that's it. That's it. You missed. It's fine. Just let it go. Okay, good. Yeah, if, if anyone, like, early on wants to fight in your minions, you should almost always fight them in your minions because... Minions do a ton of damage early, and people just don't respect that. Especially, I think you said this is Bronze 3. Especially in Bronze 3, people just disrespect the minions a lot. They do a lot of damage. I mean, if you look at this bad boy, that's like 26 damage a pop. You're getting hit by five of those. Like, two of these equal one champion. So if two ranged minions are attacking you, that's the same thing as one champion attacking you. One low AD champion that attacks you for 52. That's a lot. So when you have six things attacking you, that's like three heroes are sitting there auto-attacking you. Or three champions, rather, sitting there auto-attacking you. So it's a lot of damage <laughs> early on. People just don't respect that at all. Now, the ranged minions do a lot less. They do 12 instead of 27, but so it adds up. If they're fighting in a whole wave there, that's 36 damage from these. And then that's 81 damage from these. So that's 130. 117 damage off of one rotation if someone fights in a full wave that you have. It's like 20% of your health and just one auto attack rotation from the creeps. Creeps are killers. <laughs> Alright, what'd you get here? Okay, I like that. Um, Yeah, you can do this. Uh, I hope you're just renting this fairy charm. That's what I call it. Um... Where if you just want a little bit more pushing power, you can, and you don't have, you have kind of an odd amount of gold like you had here, where you can get your frost fang, and that's about it. Yeah, I like that move. You can always sell it back. The people watching don't understand what I mean by rent a fairy charm. You can buy it for 125 and then sell it back for 88 later, just while you have open item slots, um, and you have an odd amount of gold. You can sell it back and get 37, or um, you only lose 37 in the transaction. So you're basically just buying a lot more mana regen for that. Yeah, get up here and yeah, just harass a little bit more. Careful, careful, don't. Okay. Yeah, he he's fighting in your minions. Now, back up, back up. You're gonna die. You're gonna die. Okay, so they're like fighting in minions is good, but when you're that low and he's like a hundred percent dead, then just step behind the Kaisa and just start running. So that he can't Q you. Just have the creeps or Kaisa body block that for you. So once he E's forward and he's fighting in the minions, just go ahead and walk away. Just start walking this way. Just get out of there. Because Kai's is like 100% going to kill him. He doesn't have the E to chase you anymore. And he can't Q you through those minions. So I think you could have gotten out of there alive. Okay, push this. Use your E right here. Yes, yeah, so after you kill somebody, you want to help your allies push the wave. So you should have used your E on this wave to lower and just drop a plan on it. Just push this all into the tower. 
Frankly, I would just sit on this tower. Like, you had three people here. Just clear this minion wave. And then just run up. See how slow this is? Hold on, let me back up and show you this. Because this is important. Remember that... I don't remember the exact numbers on minions since they changed them a couple of patches ago. But... Historically, each minion's worth like 17 gold or something on average. Not including the cannon minions. Um... And they're worth experience, too, so you really want to make sure that you're denying as much as possible. Okay, so he dies. So if a lane ever dies and you're close to it, your first thought should be put all the minions in the tower. Because you want them to miss as many as possible. It's like every, you know, few seconds or so, they're effective because it's going to take two to three tower shots to kill a minion. So every, you know, two to three seconds that they aren't there, they're basically going to be losing about 17 gold. So if you can push it in there, you know, th whatever, uh, and and get it there 20 seconds before they arrive, then they're going to be losing like 170 gold, like 10 minions worth of gold. Uh, if you have a big wave like this, that's going to push in. Um, and it's even more if they lose the cannon. And it puts damage on the tower. So you always, whenever you kill somebody, you want to push it into the tower and then figure out what you want to do. And then other people have to make a choice, too. So, like, Hecarim in the jungle is either going to have to decide, do I want to go and get this experience in gold, or am I just going to lose all, th all of that experience in gold for the team? And so, you know, that could pull Hecarim in here, pull him into visibility, which could allow Darius to all in top lane. It could allow Kaisa to be a little bit safer in bot lane, he, you know, she knows that Hecarim's going to be here. It's going to delay him from clearing his camps. So if he comes here to clear this minion wave out, it might slow him down. So that he has to go in here and clear some of his camps that have spawned. Hey, thanks for the sub. I appreciate it. Um, so yeah, you just want to push it in there and it just creates a problem for the enemy every time there's minions on their tower. That's the biggest thing I think that even people in Platinum don't do a lot is push waves in. Before you do anything, push the wave in. You want to go fight for a dragon? Push your wave in. You want to go like ward for Baron? Push the wave in. Just push, push, push. The vast majority of the time. Now, you don't want to deny... Like, if Anivia was walking back to lane and the wave was going to set up in the middle of the lane, then you don't want to push it in and deny your own... Um, your own ally that experience, right? But in this situation, if somebody dies, you always want to push it in. So when you're walking up here... There's Hecarim right there. So if you just E this right now... And Zyra's great at this, because you should be maxing E first, which you are. So it'll do really, really nice damage, because it doesn't do reduced damage per target hit. So something like a Lulu does reduced damage if it hits multiple targets. A lot of champions do that. Um, but Zyra does not have that limitation. So when she E's, it does a ton of damage to the whole thing. So I would just E this, and then just drop a Q plant here. Help Anivia push this in. Hecarim probably would have come back over here if he did that. You need to be careful, because he could come in here and destroy you two. He's not six yet, but... Oh, hi, dear. I saw the cone, to, or whatever that place is today, and I was like, thinking... I'm thinking she's going to get something today. I was I was feeling it. <laughs> you want orange nice vanilla or cake? Better? What do you want? I honestly like them both, so... You can try both. My wife brought some milkshakes. There's a seasonal place next Ooh. to daycare. Hey, that is good, but that, yeah, that creamsicle takes me back. I just got warped back in time 20 years. To a Flintstones orange flavored push up pop. Right. I'm guessing they. Or just those little orange creamsicle bars. It's right, good. I'm sure Flintstones didn't come up with that flavor, but since that was my first introduction to it, that's always good. That's right. So yeah, in theory, Anivia shouldn't have a problem pushing in. You know, she should just be able to R the wave, but... Um, so yeah, you could have denied like a lot of these minions here. I think Malzar is going to get back in time. Now, speaking of which, he might be running through here. So... Y'all need to be careful. Anyways, another sort of trick with that when you push is you'll you'll get the experience. 
and you need experience as a support wherever you can get it because you lose experience whenever you roam around and ward and things like that um let me look at it there's probably a way you could have survived there um so you want to try to push him just so you get some of that experience so you can share that experience um Let's see, Malzahar is coming back in, and if he is low, I was going to say, this dragon's really tempting because you just killed their jungler, but I think y'all are right, probably not to go for it, especially because, see, you are really low on experience right now, look, he's level 6, 6, 6, and 4, All right, and so if you would have been up here and pushed this in, you probably would have been at least level 5, because you would have gained a wave of experience. Okay, so you need to be very careful, like, before you engage on an enemy, you need to be thinking, what can they do? And so it'd be very important to notice here. Well, Sona's sick, so she can ult, and that's really scary. So you want to make sure you're not uh, stacked up here with this Kaisa. All right. So yeah, you need to respect that. Um, do you have your E? I, I don't know if your E's up or not. It's kind of bugged on the replay client to see the cooldown of your abilities, but you should have waited in this bush. And then as soon as he, like, walks into range, then you go for the E when you're outside of um, vision range. Now, that's good, but you need to fan out because she's going to hit you all with this ult. Okay, yeah. At that point, yeah, there's pretty much nothing you can do. So I would have waited in that bush and just waited on one of them to come over and, like, look at it and then E onto them. So it's fine. It worked out, but th these are a couple of deaths that could have been prevented. One of the biggest things, especially at Zyra, is you really need to try not to die. Because she's very dangerous, like, to play. So try to keep your deaths somewhere to, like, four or five minimum, like, you know, four and a half. On most enchanters, you want to keep your deaths under four. But with Zyra, under five is probably okay. What'd you get? Sork boots. Okay, I like that. Gives you movement, keeps you safe, gives you that uh, 18 spell pen. Where did I put my pen here? Here we go. Uh, you need more vision. You don't have wards yet. You're pretty low on this because you need to be like trading more. You're roaming around a lot, which is good, but... Alright, push. Push this wave. Push, 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 push. E this wave. No, y'all should have E this wave first. So you think about how long does it take to just cast an E and a Q on this minion wave? Like, one second, right? So for one second, you could deny an extra minion wave and an extra, you know, 150 gold to the Malzahar. And it would put more damage on the tower. And you all still could have done Dragon. But that's just the huge thing is, like, anytime you get an opportunity, just push. After you complete a play, just push. Um, you had three people there. I do like going Infernal because this was full health. Like, you could have also tried to take the tower. But I think just push it in and then go get tower. But that's twice now. If you were to push the wave in both times, you probably could have done at least a quarter of the health on this tower. It probably would have been, like, here. Which could make a difference down the line. And Malzahar would be minus, like, maybe 300 gold at this point. So he would he would have one less Ant Tome, most likely. Or he would not have been able to complete his um, uh, mana item. And he probably would have been level 7. So all of these things are very small in isolation, but it adds up over the course of a game. Okay, yeah, I yeah, I assume that's where you, you kind of goofed up there. And that was just a, um, he said, I think that was a key binding issue. So that's okay. We've all been there, like, messed up our key bindings before. Especially when you... I know when I used to play Rumble a lot, and then I would get in Season 2, and then I would get 
you know, filled his support, then I would forget to do that too. So it, it happens. Just learn from it and just remember always check your hotkeys. Okay. Yeah, you really need to be harassing a little bit more with, uh, you're about to get it. Your wards at like 12 minutes, which is okay. But with Spell Thieves, remember, it's okay just to, like, drop a Q plant and just harass a little bit. Like, it doesn't have to be all in every fight to the death. I think he's still gonna kill him. They've nerfed Malzahar's damage so much, which I can't say I'm super sad about that. I do like Malzahar, but he's such an easy champion to play that he really shouldn't do a ton of damage. Someone was asking me the other day about Malzahar and why he isn't on, like, tier list. I'm like, that right there is why he's not on a tier list. He can't even kill a squishy champion that has no defensive items when he, like, full combos them. So they nerf the damage on everything. Like, his minions, his Q, his ultimate, all that stuff. Uh, yeah, Hecarim's probably running at y'all right now. You need to be very careful because he knows you're not going to have some of your summoners because you keep fighting down here constantly. So until you get deeper wards, like these wards are nice, but they're not enough for Hecarim. Like if he comes rolling down here really fast, he's going to be on top of you before you have time to really respond. Hmm. Yeah, I think you're, you're just, you're getting caught a little too much by Sona. Like you got to respect that she has an ult and you're pretty low. So like what you want to do, if you land an E on her... Like, the combo is you land your E, and then Q, and while your Q's going, you double cast plants, right? So that you put two range plants on her, and then you ult. So it should be, you know, um, E, Q, W, W, R. Like, her combos are really, really fast. Like, she definitely takes, I'm not sure how many games you have on her, um, but she definitely takes some getting used to. But you gotta get those plants down whenever you ult. You're like, you're way too close here. That's something that I meant to mention. It feels like you're getting a little too close uh, with your combo. It's like you always want to try to use max range. Zyra has pretty good range. Um, her plants are 800, and I think her Q is something like 900. But like this right here is probably like 400 range, 500 range maybe. So you really should be like back here. And just theoretically, Zyra should be someone who hangs back and you. Like, you're a much better peeler. When they come into you, that's when you hit them with your plants and go all in. A lot of the time. That's the best way to use Zyra. Because her E is very slow-moving, slender skill shot that's pretty easy to dodge. So you want someone to commit to you. So wait till, like, Ezreal E's forward or wait till Sona's, like, walking up to try to harass you. Instead of trying to chase her down like this, because you're very vulnerable. You don't have any sort of dashes or flashes if she decides to turn around and ult you. Um, and... Yeah, I mean, you could just eat, like, a Q to the face from Ezreal, and, like, a Sona, you know, could turn around and just Q auto you and do a ton of damage. So, yeah, you really don't want to be frontlining with Zyra. You need to be hanging out in the back. And one of the best ways to use her is, like, just hide in a bush, get control wards, and use the control wards to shut out vision. And then when people try to come check the bush, then you kill them. So, like, you could put a ward here and control ward here. And then, like, an old trick you can do also is, um, like, when you push the minion wave up, then just let them see you walk over here like you're warding. Make sure this is not warded, too. Like, use a, a sweeper or something over here. Make sure this is not warded. Walk over here. Let them see you do it. So it looks like you're leaving lane. And then circle back around behind their vision. Then hang out here. Or if you can keep a control ward in this bush, hang out here. So call that the old fake out. Let them see you walk out of vision, loop around, and then get into one of these bushes, and then they, they won't think you're there. Sometimes they'll even try to engage on your AD carry because they'll think that you're over here roaming or warding or something. Then you pop out of the bush and kill them. So you just gotta develop little tactics like that so that you catch people off guard at Zyra, because it's really hard to operate if you're just running at them or they just see you in plain vision because your skill shots are so slow and predictable most of the time. So... Yeah, either way, you don't really want to be, like, going straight at him like that. Okay. 
Okay. So this is warded. Um, so yeah, just hang out in the back. If you want to throw an E at him, fine. See, so you're too close, though. So what should happen here? Let me see. So that was a good route, first of all. So that's... You got that part down. You're hitting the skill shot. This should be max range. Like, you should not get any closer than this to these guys. Now, don't worry about killing Ezreal. You can kill Sona, too. It looks like she's at full health. You can kill her. <laughs> if you hit her um, with your E, you can still delete her. And really, like, she's the easier person to kill. Even though it looks like he's lower, he can E out of um, a lot of your stuff. So you really need to just try to kill the Sona. And you gotta respect her because she does pretty good damage here. Okay, I'm just trying to... See, this is too close. And it looks like you're aiming for Ezreal. You really want to aim for Sona. Okay, good. You hit him, but you're so low that I would just ult right here, the Sona, and then, like, run back. So I would have just, like, ulted, put the plants on Sona, and then run over this way. I think you're trying to sacrifice yourself too much to get a kill. You need to be thinking, like, your thought process should be, I want to do damage, like, chip damage as much as I can, but more than anything else, I want to not die. Like, that needs to be your thought process until you can get your kills under, you know, five on average. So you don't want to play so far back that you're not trading like small amounts of damage but you want to play back just kind of go the opposite way and just think okay i'm gonna play a little bit safer and just go for you know whoever the closest target is and i think that'll help you balance it out a little bit okay looks like you're probably going for mask or shirelia's here yeah don't get any closer they got it Fine. Be very careful around Hecarim because he can probably one shot you. Mm. Especially if you don't have all, you need to be very careful. If he like predators and they come running out of this bush, like if he's, if Ezreal's right here, Hecarim comes running out of there. Okay, he's up there right now, but that could be very scary. To write some of this down. So just always push waves. Try for smaller trades. This was another situation right there where you could just run and Kai's just going to clean him up. So, like, I like hiding out here. Does he E into you? Okay, hit him. Plant, now run. Run, 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 run. Just run. Like, if you hit him with that and then just run, just run this way. When Kaisa cleans him up and you don't die. Because right now, every time you generate a kill for your team, um, it's a trade. Which means you're not getting ahead, really. Like, your team's a little ahead... But if you would have died twice less, this Ezra would be much more poor, right? He would only have maybe five kills. So you guys still won. You won with that trade, right? You got the tower. You're denying some CS. Um, you know, that was good. But it could be better, you know? You got to win more is the big thing. Because really, especially I think you said that you always get around bronze one or silver five. Really to start getting into, like transitioning into gold which i assume is kind of your next step that you'd like to work towards you got to start getting like clean wins like not trades like you die and they die like all in trades but like they die and you win that has to start happening because you do like have to eventually carry in the sense that you have to really overperform everyone else like that's really what carry means is you just consistently perform better than other people now be careful. This is kind of dangerous. And Nivea's not coming down here. Yeah, just get out of there. 
Um, and this is something where you kind of got to read the, the situation too and not think what's the ideal. So yes, in the ideal world, you kill Hecarim, you're all near and a dragon, you, you, you take it. But this Anivia has demonstrated she doesn't have a lot of map awareness. Um, several times she has not moved from this lane. And so you have to understand that she's probably not going to move. So you might as well just pretend that it's a 4v5 when you guys want to do this dragon. Okay? Now you can ping it more too. If you want to do it, just ping it. Ping the dragon several times in the chat and then just ping like assist. Ping assist on Anivia and then ping assist down here and maybe she gets the message. I mean, you got to keep in mind a lot of people when they're playing also are just on autopilot. This guy's probably just sitting there, you know, chilling, listening to some music or just like talking with his roommate or like texting his friend or something. You know, a lot of people really just aren't focused up when they're playing ranked, especially in bronze. And so, or he just, he, he flat out may not know. I mean, maybe he hasn't been playing the game that long. Maybe he just thinks... He should just be pushing this wave and not rotating to help people. Maybe he thinks, oh, well, they got that under control. I'm just going to, you know, do this. And so he's trying to be greedy and say, of course they can get that dragon. I don't need to be there. But if you just ping help, you know, come down here and help, um, then maybe he goes. Maybe he doesn't. But it's more likely that he would help if you do that. But yeah, so this is dangerous to do because you're all low. Ezreal's really big uh, right now. He's gotten several kills, um, and he has really good poke, so he can just sit there and poke you off this dragon. So yeah, if Anivia comes down there and helps you zone out the Ezreal and the Malzar, like if he uses the Ice Wall and like channels his ult here or something, then yeah, y'all could probably do it, but because he's just sitting there in lane, you can't do it. So yeah, the ideal right call is to do it, but in the world that you live in in this game, you can't do it right there. Um, now they're going for it. You need more wards. Like, you need to be warding here. And that's a pretty good ward, but, like, here's better. And then, of course, keeping a ward on dragon is nice, too. Okay. Uh, what'd you buy? Okay, mask. Oh, yeah, you go on the standard Leandres. So good, but now it's starting to make that noise. Mm. Y'all need to get out of there. So I'm just gonna. Ooh. Okay, so. So before you start walking into darkness, you really gotta ask yourself. Where are they likely to be? So you have wards all over this place, right? You see Hecarim right here. You know he just killed Anivia. You see Malzahar. So you know Malzahar's here. You know Hecarim's right here. He just walked here. The only person you have for backup right now is a Kha'Zix who has like 400 health. You know they're not doing dragons. So really, like, you don't need to be that scared in in terms of, like, you don't need to ward this right now. You can leave this alone because we know Hecarim's right here. He just walked here. We don't know where top lane is. We don't know where Ezreal is. The big one's Ezreal because he's very fed. So I would not ward this. If you do want to ward that, a better way to do it is walk over here and ward over this wall. Or... Um, you can use your W plant to go ahead ward. <coughs> One nice thing about Zyra that helps her play a little bit more safely than someone like Brand is you can use your plants to ward because like normal, you have to get within, I think it's 500 range to ward normally. It's either 450 or 500. So you have to be like here, you know, in order to ward. I feel like it's like 450 to drop a ward, but your plants have 800 range, so you can plant to about right here, right? And so, use that to your advantage. Also, plants are free. They don't take up a, you know, a ward charge off of your gold item. So, if you really must ward this, and for some reason you don't want to do it over this wall, then you can walk to, like, right here and put a plant there. It'll give you immediate vision of the area. 
then you can spawn a queue on it and it'll give you a lot of vision of the area and it'll watch the area for you. So even if this was control warded, the plant would still see through that because control wards don't shut off vision from plants. I talk about that a lot in the Zyra guide. So that's one really nice thing about Zyra is you don't have to go up to that 450 range if it's a dangerous area and you want vision. You can use your plants to get 800 range um, and you can use the plants to get around control wards. So, you know, the best thing to do right here would be to use your W over this wall <clears throat> to get vision of this first. Second best option would be to use your W right here to get vision on the corner there. Probably the worst option is to walk up and try to ward it yourself because we just don't know where they are. And Ezreal's so fed, he can probably one-shot you. So yeah, that, that's the issue there is... Like, you know they're not on Dragon, so they're somewhere in here because you didn't you never saw Hecarim exit, right? You didn't see him on this ward. You didn't see him on this ward. He's not on Dragon. And you know he was right there because he just killed a Nivea and walked, walked away. So, you know, you just got to be thinking, if you're going to be walking through dark areas, where are they likely to be? Is there a chance they could be there? And if there is, you need to be very careful. You, okay, so working Leandres. I think if you're gonna go for the just the standard Leandres, I wouldn't recommend doing um, domination as your secondary. That's really only if you're gonna do that special um, Shirelia's uh, ghost build, which wouldn't be a bad build because you do have Kha'Zix and Darius and Kaisa. All those people do a ton of damage. And if you went Resolve, you might have actually lived in some of these encounters. I think with just a little bit of better positioning that you could live through most of these deaths anyways, even without Resolve. But the Resolve would will definitely help. You know, once it gets nerfed next patch, which they're, it's looking like it's going to get nerfed. We never know. Sometimes these PvE things don't go through. Okay, good route. That was good. Um, then we'll, you know, we'll take a look at the rings. You can always see the current runes that I recommend on um, on my tier list when I release it, because I release rune info and all that stuff there. Um, wow, he turned around. Okay, he flashed. He's done. Don't do Baron. You should pretty much never do Baron on this patch, unless you like fully ace them or something. Like it's Baron is a very dangerous proposition. No, don't get involved in that. Don't get involved in that. Just get out of there. Just, just run. Ezreal can ult up here and kill him anytime now. Yeah, Hecarim's gonna run him down and kill him, probably. Get out of there. Run, 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 run. Run. Just keep running. Just let him die. Just get out. Get out. Just run. Oh, if they kill both of you, that might be, uh, that might be bad. Yeah, if, if people are doing dumb things, you just gotta let them do it. Just, just let them die. I mean, that's one of the hardest lessons as a support, and I'm guilty of doing this too. It's like, if people are goofing around and just doing silly things, you just you gotta just not get involved and just leave. And that's one of the things that I've noticed, like watching some of the like pro players, like Koreans and Solo Q. If there's a bad thing going on, they're out. They're done. They do not stick around. They just leave. And. That's one of the biggest things that I try to work on. I think it's always a struggle with every support is when do you try to stick around and help people versus if they're doing something dumb, when do you just abandon them? Most of the, most of the time, you should err on the side of abandoning them.
Because you potentially, if you stick around too much. Okay, that was good. How many are dead? Uh, Adult Baron. Yeah, just go defend this tower. Um, most of the time, if you stick around, you're turning like something that's not great into something that's really bad. Okay, now you can Baron. Baron, Baron, Baron. Ping this. Ping, 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 ping. That's an ace. Faster, faster, faster. Get over here. You gotta be quick. I don't know if it needs to be that quick. You like popped a ghost for it, but... Um, if that was your ping... I don't know if that was yours or somebody else's. You always want to put it right here. Because then it'll see the back part of the pit. Like, right now, it doesn't see if this is warded. It's not gonna matter, because they can't get here fast enough, probably. Um, but yeah, you don't really want to go there if you're on the blue side. Now, if you were on red side, then maybe you can put it there to see if they have wards up here. But especially when they're on red side, the most likely thing they're going to do to try to defend Baron is just ward over this wall. And so you want to make sure that you have it in here so that it sees this whole thing. up that the enemy's dead. I already had that written down. Alright, let's see what we got here. You got Leandres. Okay, good. Okay. So after this, you can either go Rylai's or Void Staff with kind of how this game's going. Um, since it seems like you're dying quite a bit. I mean, that you know, it's tough. Ezreal can run you down when he's this fed. Malzahar can lock you down. Uh, Hecarim can run you down. I think going Rylai's is pretty good. You're gonna need to be able to... Um, Kite this Mundo later, so you're gonna want some slows. So, I would. He does have a lot of magic resist, but I think I would still go for Rylai's here. Run, 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 run. Okay. Just drop plants, just like cue these things and just run. Run, no, 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 no. Do not walk up for autos. Just drop a plant if you have one and just keep running. Like, drop a plant here and just keep running. There you go. Run. Don't turn around. Just keep running. There you go. There you go. Because your autos really aren't going to do very much. No, run. Run, 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 run. No. No. She turned around and popped you. Okay. It did work out, but your autos just aren't really going to do a lot here when you're that low. So, yeah. Just... If you have a... If your spells come up, just turn around and throw a spell. Otherwise, just run to the back of the fight. Don't worry about landing autos. It's way too dangerous. At that point. Need more wards down. I know it's hard when everybody's just dying all the time to keep wards on the map. You don't have to have perfect wards. Just keep something on the map. So I'd probably like ward this. <clears throat> just like ward here. Just put them somewhere in the middle. Just like ward here and ward here. And just like... No, no. You need to get... Why are you going top though? You need to get with the team... It's too deep for wards. 
Yeah, if there's nothing really going on, just be in the middle of the map, because that's where people usually meet up. And, you know, there's nothing to protect up here. Like, you want to think about you using your vision to protect stuff that they might go for. So what are they going to go for right now? Probably their best options are mid or bot tower. So the best place to ward would be, like, you know, this, like, the river's as deep as you want to go if you don't have any vision of anybody. Cause... Yeah, like, right here is a good ward spot, like, maybe here, and then just wait until you see them, and then you can kind of plan what you want to do there. Because there's no objectives on the map right now. There's no dragon, there's no bear, and you have most of their tier twos, so. You have kind of a weird team comp. You don't really have any reliable engage. You don't have great siege. I mean, like, Anivia's kind of good siege, but... Yeah, I think I would just ward around the middle and just chill. This has been several fights where you haven't been there, though. Like, you've been just off doing other things. Like, you need to just stay close to where your core team is. There you go. That's good. So, yeah, should they be getting in fights when you're not close by? Probably not, but they will. <laughs> so, just try to stay as close to your team as possible. Don't worry about deeper wards. Everybody backs, you're not going to have enough time, I don't think. I mean, maybe. You don't have teleports available, though. No, leave him alone. He can kill you. Okay. Be careful, this could be a 3v5. Remember, they all spawn in your base, or they all spawn in their base. Your team spawns in your base, so they're going to get here a lot faster than you will. It's a 3v5. Kha'Zix is off doing random jungle camps, and Kaiser just spawned, so y'all need to get out of here. If she, like, flash ults, the three of you, it's going to be really bad. Just run. No, 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 no. Kha'Zix is top. Don't. You do not want to fight this. Just keep running. If one of them wants to run, like if Darius turns around and tries to suicide, just let him do it. Don't fight. Kha'Zix is still not here. Okay, yeah, blow him up. Back up, back up. You're getting too close in these fights. You're just getting hit by a lot of collateral stuff. So like, when everyone's just kind of A-ramming like this, you need to just throw your spells and leave. You just throw your spells down and just run out. Like, max range, you know, when that Anivia gets hit, just, like, E her, Q, plant, plant, and walk out. You've done your job. It's fine. Because what's, what's, like, the most basic thing the enemy team's going to do? And that's, like, they're just going to spam all their abilities right in the middle of everybody, right? Like, Hecarim's just going to run in the middle of everybody. You know, Sona's just going to ult in the middle of everybody. And you want to make sure that if, if they want to commit to killing you, they have to aim for specifically you. And they're not going to hit anyone else with their abilities. And they're not going to do that most of the time. But, you know, when they're trying to kill the Kai'Sa that just jumped in there, they're trying to kill the Anivia, they can just kill you on accident, right? Just because you're there. Because you're getting hit by all of the area of effect stuff. So if we go back and look here, then we'll pass forward after that. Okay, let's look at this again. Let's look at the positioning here. Okay. Plant, run. There's no reason to walk this close because you have no spells, right? Like, you already just did all of your stuff. And you just get killed just by random, like, Hecarim ult, Sona ult, Malzahar bubble. You just get hit by all of that random stuff. So, like, you should just keep running, because Kha'Zix is not here. That's so close. You see how close you were when you spawned that? You're, like, 100 range. You need to be, like, practicing using your max range. Like, right here. You can spawn it from right here. That's the length that you want to be when you spawn stuff. Now, let's watch this again. You've got Ignite, also. I wouldn't even get close enough to Ignite, honestly, unless... 
pack rope already landed. Okay, so there it is. Go ahead and E him. I would have E'd. Now run. Like, once you hit him with your spells, you run. Because you know, like I said, Hecarim and Sonar are just going to run in here. So they weren't even really aiming for you. They just happened to get you because you were there, you know? So that's the big thing, is you don't want to get killed in collateral damage. So yeah, you need to stay at about 800 range in the back in most fights. Because you have a huge effective range, like, so not only, like, if you just drop plants, you can drop those in at, like, 800 range. Off of your seeds, but then the plants themselves have, like, 725 range or something, your range plants. So that means, effectively, you can still, like, do damage and hit people from, like, 1,500 units away. So if you're like right here and you spawn a plant here and there's somebody that's over here, you can still spawn ranged plants right here and it'll still hit them. So you can effectively damage people from like here to here. So, you know, that's the thing about Zyra, she has a lot of range. So you gotta make use of that range. Okay, good, yeah, I do like the Rylai's here. I'm not sure what your next item is, but it probably should be Void Staff. The reason that Void Staff is so good is because you're doing percentage damage um, with your Leandres. This doesn't benefit from AP at all, but it does benefit from spell penetration. So this extra damage, the Torment, um, and the Madness, both benefit from spell penetration a lot. And then your plants have really high base damage, but pretty low scaling. Um, and so that's why Zyra benefits much more heavily from penetration than from... Um, AP. That's what makes her historically the most effective AP support, is because she has super high base damage for the plants. So yeah, that's why Void Staff... I think Void Staff might even be more damaged than Death Cap right now, even though Death Cap costs, you know, like, almost a thousand gold more. I think Void Staff might actually be more damaged than Death Cap. We'd have to do the math on that at this point with the items. But it's certainly similar damage for a much cheaper price. Now, not every champion's like that. Zyra is kind of unique because of her plants and how that interacts with Leandres. But especially because you're proccing Leandres for the double damage so often with Rylai's plus Leandres that you really, really want the spell pen. Spell Pit's also exceptionally good against towers. I talked about that in my most recent patch notes, how they changed the way that tower interaction works in this patch. Okay. Let him die. Don't get don't get in tower range. Um Hecarim's dead. Okay, yeah, just run and plant. No. Nope. Full full range. Max range. Keep running. Nope, don't. You're we're not getting close. You just got within like 300 range. Okay, good. Keep running. Nope, nope. Nope. If he hits you with a cleaver, it's gonna be real bad. Keep running. Like, you keep turning around to try to auto like a 5,000 health Mundo. And she got you because you walked back into range. So, like, you, you gotta just run. 800 range. I want you to just think, I'm not gonna go within 800 range of anybody. Just like an entire game, just practice that. Except for like in lane if you're landing an auto. But I just wanna I wanna slow this down again here really quickly. And then we'll move on. I just want to make this point, because this is kind of a, a subtle point. I think a lot of people out here this happens. So right there, spawn those plants. Good. Okay. See the range on that? That's an acceptable range to harass. No, keep running. There's nothing you're gonna do to save this Anivia right now. You have no cooldowns, you have no shields, heals, and now you put yourself within like six hundred range of him. He could much more easily cleaver you. So I know you want to help her, but there's nothing you can do. And being closer range, like, this doesn't change anything. Like, you're just walking within, like, 200 range. Like, if you were Janna with an ultimate, you could ultimate people back or something if you got that close, maybe. 
Okay, good. That was max range spell. Spawn plants here. No, you're, you're walking too close. You're walking way too close. I don't. I like waking up those plants, but you can do that from like here. You don't have to walk to here to do it. Good dodge on the cleaver. Okay, keep running. You're not killing these people. They have too much health. Mundo still has like 2,400 health. Sona still has over like 2,000 health. No, don't turn around. Don't. Yeah, see, there's just no reason to get that close. Okay. So that's that's the last time I kind of mentioned that there. But yeah, just practice, just in team fights especially. Just say, I'm not going to get any closer than my seed range. If I can't plant a seed there, then I'm, um, I'm not going to be closer than that. Looks like you are dead, Cap. Okay. Yeah, I think Baron's good. You can spawn your plants almost right on top of Baron, and that's... That's helpful if you don't have a heavy armor jungler like Kha'Zix that have a lot of armor. He has pretty good life steal off his... Oh, he has Death Stance. That helps out. And his Q also steals a little life, I think, if he's in... Or his W. If he's close range. Death Cap. Yeah. I mean, Cap looks good, but especially against people that have a lot of health... Because your Leandre does more damage the more health they have, and if they have a lot of magic resist, um, then I'm pretty sure Void is going to do more damage. Now, Sona's got an interesting build there. So you got to be careful that Sona is actually going to hurt. Kha'Zix might be dead. Okay, they left. Y'all need wards. A lot more wards. Now, Ekrum could come rolling up here. Yeah, you need to be very careful. Need to, okay, he's over here. He just popped up. Okay, there he is. Ekrum's what you gotta watch. You really don't want him to run in and flank your back line. Kha'Zix is not here again, so you need to back up. It's gonna be a 4v5. If Ekrum runs in here right now, they can probably end the game. Kha'Zix doesn't have teleport. I, you just need to go to where Kha'Zix is. This guy just doesn't understand sort of what's going on. No, do not fight this. This is bait. Don't do it. You don't have Kha'Zix. Okay, hopefully you guys clean this up. Alright, Darius got his kills and his resets. So They goofed that up. You gotta always look, before you fight, you need to look at where your allies are, and then check teleport, the teleport situation. And you need to ping your allies back. Just type out, like, don't fight, we don't have Cossacks. Then if he refuses to stop splitting, then just go, go to him, just go sit on him. Just say, we're gonna push with you. Like, yeah, Kha'Zix is not that great in a siege, but he needs to be around the area because... Otherwise, it's just a 4v5, so he doesn't have teleport so. Anyways, it worked out. They goofed up the last team fight, but that was definitely like, really scary because if... Hecarim just decides he wants to just all in and, you know, kill you on the back line or kill Kai'Sa, and then Sona follows up with, like, a flash ult or something like that, or Malzahar flash ult somebody... Like, they had so many ways to start that fight, and they could have forced a 4v5. 
um, but they chose not to do that. And Sona had kind of a troll build. If she went for, like, Redemption, Locket, um, Ardent Sensor, or something like that, that would have been would have been really rough. But it, it worked out in the end. Um, but these are just things to kind of be aware of. So, this one's a little bit longer than usual. I did talk about some stuff and slowed it down there, but hopefully you don't mind. A little bit of extra, extra tips in there. But we do need to go ahead and close this out here. So, um, the biggest things I think to work on are... Um, Okay, so back away if your spells are on cooldown, especially if the enemy's gonna die. There were several fights where I saw you, I saw you just sitting there, just auto attacking like two or three times, like an Ezreal who's like right in your face, auto attacking you and like queuing you and things like that in lane several times, and then just throughout the game too, it felt like you were going in and just trying to just auto attack them. You don't do enough damage for that to matter most of the time right so throwing in an auto attack is good but only if you're also trading damage so you're also casting a q plan on somebody and then auto attacking or um you're just throwing one auto because they're out of position in the laning phase you just want to hit them once um and then back away then that's okay but there were a lot of times where you're just just standing there autoing and that you don't want to do that like yeah you are chipping in a little bit of damage but you know if you're kiting backwards if you're trying to reposition there's like a hecarim on your kaiser or something like that then sure, that's that's fine. You know, you want to use your autos where possible, but the problem is you're making yourself too vulnerable. If they're focusing you, you're making yourself too vulnerable um, in a lot of those situations in order to land just an incremental amount of damage. So try to work on that a little bit. Um, Okay, so always push the waves. We've mentioned that. Um, it denies CS, which denies gold. It denies experience. It does damage on towers. And it gives. It oftentimes will give you visibility of the enemy. So it does several things. So if you push that wave middle, and there's a good chance Hecarim's going to go there to try to clear it up. If he doesn't, they lose all that gold and experience. If he does show up, then you know where he is. So you know you can more safely do the dragon, or you can more safely... Um, you know, other people in your other lanes can more safely trade or fight. It just, it's really good. You just deny resources and it gives you a lot of intel. Also, you get experience by doing that. And since you're the support and you're going to have less experience than everybody else, it's really important that you can get experience anytime you have the opportunity um, so that you stay relatively even with everyone else um, in terms of leveling in the game. Okay. Um... So try for smaller trades in lane. Not everything has to be a fight to the death. It's okay just to spawn a Q plant and then just auto attack somebody and just back up and say, okay, I did 25% of their health. That's good. And then once you get them to like 50% health when they're already low, then you can say, okay, now we can go for the E plant all in. Right? And hit the closest target to you. Um... So this is kind of like the same tip, but a little bit different. So stay max range as much as possible. Then also aim for the closest target to you. There were a couple of fights where there was someone low on the back line, like maybe Sona was a bit lower or Ezreal was a bit lower in certain fights, and you were trying to hit them with your E, or you are trying to go up and auto attack them, and you were getting really close to dangerous people. Remember bot lane, Ezreal was at 50%. You hit him with a root. You hit Sona also, and she was right in front of you, but you walked up to like 100 range of the Sona, to try to combo the Ezreal, and she was able to ult you, um, and then they turned around and killed you in the lane. So you want to make sure that you're hitting the closest person to you, kind of like an AD carry. You just want to peel and just hit whoever's the closest. Don't try to aim for the back line. Someone else will do that, right? You just want to do as much damage as possible, as safely as possible um, when you're Zyra. So a lot of times it doesn't really matter who you're damaging. You're just damaging whoever you can, and you're just trying to stay safe. Um.
Okay, so think very carefully before you venture out into darkness. So, um, you know, we walked through that with the Hecarim. It was highly likely he was in your jungle, and then Ezreal could have been in your jungle as well. But he Hecarim was definitely in your jungle, and you didn't have a lot of backup. So just think, okay, if I'm going to go ward this, where are they likely to be on the map? If I don't see them, is there a chance that they could be in this area? And then use your plants... Um, Use your plants to help scout because they have 800 range and the wards have like 450 where you can uh, place them. So use the W. Use Spawn a Q off of your W. So whenever you, you know, W somewhere, use that Q. Give, get a lot of vision of the area before you go up to scout. This gives her a major advantage over other ACP supports. Things like Fiddlesticks and Brand who have to walk up and manually ward these bushes. It's a lot more dangerous for them. Zyra, in theory, should be much safer because she basically has an effective 800 ward range and she has way more free wards than anybody else because those plants act as short-term wards. So take advantage of that. Keep yourself a bit safer. Um, let silly allies die. If people are trying to stick around and fight, you know, and they're like 200 health, or if it's very clear that there's a gank or a rotation coming, like what happened top lane, where it was very clear that somebody was going to come up there, like Hecarim or Ezreal, or somebody was going to come up and clean up that low health Darius, just let him die. Just run. You know, like spawn a plant near him or something, but just run away after that. Don't stick around and fight to the death. There's no honor in fighting to the death in this. There's just, uh, you're just making it worse. Because if they kill one person, if they kill the, the silly ally, you know, that's okay. It's not great, but it's just one death, right? So you'll have four people left. You can still maybe defend a dragon or maybe defend a baron or a tower or something like that. But if you get caught up and they kill you too, all of a sudden that's only three people to defend those things. And that gets a lot more dangerous. In addition to just giving them extra gold outright, it also opens you up to losing even more objectives. And you lose vision control because now you're dead and your wards are going to time out and then it's going to be more dangerous to put up vision because you're not going to have any like vision in the first place like you need vision to put up safe vision so it's kind of like a catch-22 but basically like you don't want to die because then your wards are going to go down and you're not going to be able to replace them as safely as you could have if the wards were still up when you replace them so you really want to be replacing those wards before they time out and if you're dying much higher probability they're going to time out before you replace them Okay, so let those silly allies die. Uh, max range in fights, and just overall... Man, we don't need that adverb there. Who needs adverbs? Okay, so you need to ward more. Um, I ought to say ward more instead of more wards. There we go. Uh, and just think carefully, what does your team want to do next? Okay, are you going to try to contest mid-tower? Are you going to fight for this dragon here in 30 seconds? Are you going to fight for Baron at some point? Are you going to bait Baron? Just think, what are you trying to do next? And then also, what does the enemy want to do? Are they going to go for your mid-tower? Are they going to go for dragon? So just try to like get vision around potential areas of conflict. Like, there was one time where you just went up and just kind of randomly warded the tribe bush above Baron when the rest of your team was positioning mid lane. Like, there's no reason to ward that bush because the towers were already down up there. There was nobody who was split pushing at that time in the in the top lane. Baron wasn't going to be up for another, like, three minutes. There's just a really low probability that someone is going to be up there, and if they are up there, then they weren't going to be doing anything consequential because there's no objective so it doesn't matter right so you should just have warded around the mid area just kind of the river maybe your jungle entrance maybe their jungle entrance because that's more likely there's going to be more foot traffic there because the only thing that was probably going to happen at that point is maybe someone sieges a tier two either you or them or just a random the most likely thing is a random a ram fight's going to break out of the mid lane and that's what happened so just ward around the area where there's going to be action don't go too far out of your way to ward into places where it's very unlikely that something's going to happen. I have entire videos about warding on the channel if you want to check that out. So I can give you some more tips on really good places to ward in different situations if you um, look at that. So I have one that's like vision control and domination, I think. And then another video just talking about like top five tips or better macro. And I talk about warding a lot in that video 
as well. So that's going to be it. Thank you very much, Sean. Hopefully this helps you out. Um, you know, you did have some really good ease in there. You had some good ults. Uh, I think just lowering those deaths a little bit, you know, try to try to get that down to less than five as much as possible. And doing these things will help you out, especially staying at that 800 range and just letting silly allies die. I think that, and not venturing into darkness, I think those are kind of the biggest things that can help you, you know, die a little bit less. And then also just going for those small traits instead of the all ends. And switching over to uh, Bone Plating and Chrysalis will help you a lot too. On this patch, maybe you'll still do that next patch. We'll see what the final numbers are on that. Um, but I think some of that stuff can definitely help you out a lot. Okay, that's going to be it. Thank you very much. Hope you enjoyed this. Um, anyone else out there watching this, if you you know want a coaching session yourself, just email me at thestrategyprofessorgmail.com. If you want to watch more coaching videos, I've got a link for you. And if you want to watch uh, just more info about Zyra, if you want to learn how to play her, check out the Zyra guide. We've got a long, in-depth guide for that on the channel as well. So that's going to be it. Thank you very much. Have a good day, and I'll see you next time.